Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to FTB Interactions. So we're actually picking back up after the last episode. Um, you know, it's still, well, it's still, you know, it's like a couple hours after um, I've been getting some things together. This has been running all as well. Um, I don't have it plugged up to the system just yet because I, once again, I am still making caches. Um, all of these have been made and are enchanted. I'm not placing them down until I have them enchanted. Um, also, I did just go ahead and throw life mending on these. Maybe not the best idea, but I think it's going to be okay for us. Um, and I went ahead and just repaired them up with my life. So, um, And I did upgrade down here. I upgraded so that we can start making Regen 2 potions. So we have the larger uh, rustic brewery now. Alright, so what we are going to do today... Um, you know, originally we were going to be getting the mana chicken today until I realized that, uh, no, that's not going to be happening. Um, it's going to require that we go into space and we get into HV, um, a bare minimum. So we're not going to be doing that this episode, but what we are going to be doing is we are going to head out and let me find on the map. We're actually going to be doing a mix of kind of miscellaneous sorts of quests today. Or not miscellaneous sorts of quests, but miscellaneous projects, and most of them relate to liquids and gases in one way or another. So that's going to be our primary focus today, is kind of just working on chemistry stuff. And we could, of course, we could collect mana. There's a lot of mana all over the place. Um, so we could pump it up, and that's an option, but I don't know that I want my ore processing system to necessarily run that unless I'm running just something really rare I'm probably not gonna bother with it truth be told but we're gonna pop up here and we're gonna pop down here and I'm hoping I'm hoping that this is an ice dungeon and if so I'm hoping that we can find some jelly cryothia but It looks as though this one has already been looted. And they... Looks like they dumped... Uh, yeah, it looks like they dumped all the loot just here. Or all the loot maybe that they didn't want or something. I don't know. There is a Blizz spawner right here. That's lit up and I guess saved... Um, I don't see any gelid though. I know normally it can spawn in these dungeons, so I was just kind of curious if there was any gelid. Actually, that upper right room, there's some kind of a blue liquid, it looks like. Maybe that's uh, jelly cryothium. It is, it is jelly cryothium. Okay, never mind. We are good to go. Okay, so we are going to get slowness. I'm just going to slash home, though. And we're going to take this Jelly Cryothium. We're going to pop down here. This is our first little project. I was expecting to actually have to fight a little bit, but that didn't quite happen. We're going to grab ourselves a couple smart chickens. Um, let me go ahead and actually pull up this advanced chemical reactor, because we don't actually need this over here. We're going to put a different machine down, uh, since we're not going to be using that one. Um, and I know there's 64 buckets of liquid starlight. Uh, let me pop over and get something to empty that out. Or empty out a little bit of it. I'm really, I'm honestly, I'm backed up on liquid starlight, so I'm not that worried about it. But basically, I want to use this chemical bath for just a minute. Um, we're going to set it up just right over here. And we're going to throw our smart chickens in there and just dump two buckets of jelly cryothium into there. And... We're going to speed it up a little bit here. Because that's going to give us a new chicken that'll be really handy uh, since we can already make it. That is the gassy chicken. The gassy chicken produces gassy enriched eggs. And gassy enriched eggs can make nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and noble gases for free. We can also use the chemical reactor to get higher outputs of things like hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. But with this, we're also going to get noble gases. Uh, which we can then centrifuge for carbon dioxide, helium, methane, and deuterium. And with a thousand millibuckets of noble gases, we can make positive and neutral matter as well, which is kind of nice. So we can do a whole lot with this. Uh, you will see, you will notice that it's 34,000 
millibuckets of uh, noble gases to get all of this stuff, but it is a ton of carbon dioxide, helium, methane, and deuterium. Um, so it is something to bear in mind, but we're gonna get this nitrogen, oxygen, and argon. Um, all of these are pretty easy to automate, but we can also just do it with chickens. So we are going to do that. And I still haven't eaten, by the way, since like last episode forever ago. All right, so I'm just gonna get these chickens bred up real quick to 10, 10, 10s. Okay, I got our 16 gassy chickens. So let me just grab this roost. We're gonna pop up. I'm not gonna worry about, um, I don't think. I mean, they make the gassy enriched egg, which makes this stuff or that stuff, but nothing else. Yeah, I'm just going to automate it for these four things and then we'll possibly set something up for these if we need like a dedicated, uh, if we have something that's dedicated using these things, then we'll probably set up a dedicated chemical reactor, I imagine. But this room's gonna start getting repurposed into our um, kind of LV chemistry room. Uh, we're gonna have the roost sitting right here. And yeah, for at least for right now. We may adjust some things, but that's going to start producing our gassy enriched eggs. And it does produce three at a time, so that's kind of nice. And we have completed that quest, and we get 16 gassy enriched eggs. Okay, and then I'm going to just run some power over to this. Oh, I'm sorry, this takes an MV centrifuge, though. Okay, there's our advanced centrifuge. We're going to go ahead and grab that. And for right now, I'm just going to use basic steam turbines. And that's just because I'm waiting kind of for my materials to build back up and I want to get the other turbines that go over here. I just want to go ahead and get those done. And I'm getting dangerously low on copper. So this is just a temporary solution uh, for the time being. So let's go ahead. We're going to set a conduit up there. And we are going to run our blue steel cable in right there. Our advanced centrifuge setting there. We'll go ahead and toss those in. We're actually just going to remove this stuff for right now. Um, we're going to be totally changing up this entire area um, to make it all a bit more fitting uh, for what we're, what we're going to be doing over here. Um, but we're going to add in steam turbines that just line that wall there. And we're basically at the point we're going to make this room a bit better now. So that's going to start running our gassy enriched chicken eggs and we're going to start building up nitrogen, oxygen, argon and those noble gases and it is super fast um, so the high costs for the stuff that we're going to be using the noble gases for not really a big deal and we're producing oxygen now. So there's that. Um, we're going to deal with these gases here in just a minute um, but before we get over to that I want to pop downstairs. I want to grab our learning chicken. I want to grab our fluid extractor. We're going to set this back up. And we're actually going to steal, um, running some redstone over here. I'm going to go ahead and steal that. And we're going to steal this fluid extractor as well. We're going to be running two fluid extractors. We're just going to stay with the basics um, instead of upgrading. But we are going to be running two of them with this chicken. Um, and so we're going to set these up. And I'm going to go ahead and put a conduit line that runs up there. We're going to put our fluid extractor, fluid extractor, like that. Conduits there. I'm going to go ahead and dump that in there. Let that start running. And uh, I guess for right now, I need to just move the barrel. Let this get ran out. And then we'll set up the chicken proper. So we'll just put this here in place of the roost. And extract is always active. And let's go ahead and set it to round robin also. And these, I'm just going to trash these. Okay, so that's making our experience. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to go to the nether. And we're going to take our scanner in with us as well. All right, now if we look in the quests, uh, definitely not a safe space. I don't know if it's listed here. Uh, we're going to go digging for ancient debris. It's found randomly in the nether at depths of Y less than or equal to 17. Okay. Um, but luckily we have a scanner in this. It's not uh, it's not going to be too bad for us. Oh, actually, you know what? Ancient debris is not showing up on the scanner. Um, which basically just means it's not seeing it as a rare ore. We can still detect it with a block detector. But 
There we go. Quest complete. Wow, it's huge veins in this pack, though, it seems like. Okay, I have 18 ancient debris, and we did complete a quest. I think they give us some of... Yeah, we get four netherite scrap there. Um, that's going to give us enough for what I have in mind for today. So we're going to go ahead and warp on back. As far as processing this, we can just smelt it. Um, if we have starlight infusion, we can get four times for a single. That's not bad. If I have the Thaumium on hand, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'm just going to say I'm not worried about it. Hey, I do. Okay. So we're going to do uh, the Starlight Infusion then. Okay, I went ahead and made this little shortcut door for just a minute because we're going to be kind of in and out of here uh, for a moment. So let me go ahead and grab a bucket of that. And we're going to get the Starlight Infuser being made and we need just a fraction of starlight okay so we're gonna have to wait but um, I am gonna go ahead and build out the structure okay so there's that and good timing too because it is night we should be able to start that up and I'm just gonna pull this up for just a moment I'll bring it right back but I need to fill this thing up there's that, and we're going to get a quest complete. There we go. We're going to set this up right there. We are going to start running this. Um, now I need 20, I think. Now over here, my lucky star, we got uh, multi-jump one and an infused crystal shovel. Not bad. Okay, I got all of that that I needed, so I'm going to go ahead and put this back. We've got some other uses coming up for that, but for right now, we are good. And you know what? It's not the netherite scrap that we need four of in this pack. So I only actually need six of this. Um, but what I do need, I'm going to pop back in here real quick. I need some nether bricks. And what we're going to do, let me grab... That, I didn't take any damage. But let me grab 24 gold. Man, we're running out of gold bad. I have six. <laughs> Getting that ore processing system up and going couldn't have come any sooner. Really couldn't have. Alright, so... And there is a chance that this is going to fail. Like our first one did. So, hopefully... I have enough gold to make this work. Okay, if I do, it's going to be really close. This is the last gold I have. Come on. Yes. Okay, we do have enough gold. Awesome. But I now have zero gold to my name. Great. Let me go ahead and drop that in. Drop that in. And go. Oh, this has to be in the MV alloy smelter. That's fine. I'm just going to set it over here. And we're going to go ahead and run this. Okay, so there's our six netherite. Now I've got to pop back into the nether and go get some soul sand real quick. Okay, we're just going to pop over to here. Come out a little ways. Right here should be good. We're just going to break us up some soul sand. There we go. There's a few stacks. And you can see I'm still not getting hungry, even vein mining. It's wonderful. All right, now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take, go in here to our advanced centrifuge that was making all this stuff. And we're going to take this nitrogen. That's why I did the gassy chicken first. Um, we're going to come over to our electric blast furnace, dump that nitrogen into here, and we're going to toss in netherite and soul sand into here and let this start running. And what's going to happen is we are going to get ourselves. Oh, it's going to get pulled into here. We're going to get ourselves some solarium. And this is done. Let me grab that. Pop over to here for just a moment. Toss that in. And we're going to get ourselves some crystalline alloy ingots. 
and let me go ahead and get our fluid tank and we got a quest completed a tank that sucks oh, okay but that doesn't give us any reward let's pop over and we're gonna get that running there is our soul machine chassis and then we're gonna get that and our experience obelisk aha okay so now uh, we're gonna put conduits there and then our experience obelisk sitting here and we're gonna say that you extract you extract there we go and that's gonna feed all the XP that we make from this guy into this and technically we could upgrade these to better fluid extractors I will maybe later um, because eventually this will be an MV room but uh, for now this is fine and now that we've got our experience obelisk I'm gonna cut for a while um, that was the main thing I want to push right now I'm gonna cut for a bit I'm going to let our materials build back up and if I'm feeling skippy I might go ahead and set up our duplicated boiler side over here and then whenever I come back we're gonna continue pushing um, we're gonna continue pushing into a bit of chemistry stuff I um, mean and, and I'm going to kind of reorganize this room a little bit and stuff as well um, to get us ready for all of that so anyways I will be back in a bit and there's one thing I want to show um, just in case you're not familiar with it um, because right now I've been setting up my logistics system and plugging it up to our fluids and where we're going to be storing fluids uh, one of the places we're going to be storing fluids um, and in case you're not familiar with the way that logistics works with fluids if we put this down right here and these like to change when they're stacked um, until they have a fluid in them and actually something I'm not sure about can I just drag this I can oh that's nice okay I don't remember being able to drag it before but um, there we go you see nitrogen just got sent over here um, all you need is just like an extractor pipe or something similar um, and plug it up and then just plug it up just like any other logistics pipe it, and it's gonna send uh, that fluid over for you um, so now we're sending nitrogen and that's basically what it was waiting on though I do think I am gonna need um, uh, speed for this yeah because right now it's really just pumping out nitrogen is all it's doing what about item extraction upgrades oh no it's not great because it means we're never gonna get anything but no <laughs> but nitrogen and oxygen out of this it will work fine for some of these others you know that are pretty quick but uh, or they don't have too many fluids but this has so much that it may not work here okay well in that case we're going to use the only eight fluid conduits that we have from that one quest a while back and we're just going to say extract always active on that and we're going to say that you can insert you can insert then let me grab this one and this one we just have so many fluids coming in from this uh, to deal with that I think this will just be better for us uh, in this case. Inter fluid conduits quite nice for dealing with any kind of fluid because uh, they can move multiple fluids at once so it's going to pull all that out and then since we've got this oxygen left over what I'm going to do I'm going to let this system just run all the time and um, I have a fluid trash can right over here and we're gonna set this up uh, just right back here and we're gonna say that you can insert but you're gonna have a priority of negative five so prioritize these tanks and then once these are filled you can trash the stuff just to make sure that we stay topped off on these um, it actually produces oxygen and nitrogen at a pretty good rate uh, these are a little bit slower but now that this can run constant these are gonna fill up pretty quick um, and we should be able to have a decent amount of oxygen to kind of work with uh, for our needs as well so and then I may still run our logistics pipe system over and down here and 
that way we can access our logistics system can access this if we want to do any fluid crafting with it um, but I think for moving stuff from the centrifuge I think just these interfluid conduits are gonna be our best bet for that okay it's been a little bit um, I did upgrade this uh, to signal them and I went ahead and enchanted it also so we can store 1,280,000 millibuckets um, of the noble gases which we already have 857 buckets uh, the rest of these are all filled out uh, and then I went ahead and switched out the signal and experience for just a portable tank experience this is really just to repair my armor and then over here uh, we have liquid starlight glue rubber destabilized redstone and concrete we're gonna get into those liquids a bit more as well as a few others here shortly but one thing that I do want to do um, because if we pop out actually really really quick if we pop back here you'll notice I've been working on this side and getting the structure set up and I've got to get a bunch more glass and stuff but we're gonna do some things to help me out <laughs> quite a bit uh, first up we're gonna go ahead and craft ourselves oh yeah flawed quartzite let's go ahead and get ourselves a V resonator so there's that and then Two simple arcane mechanisms and I should have a hopper yeah I ordered it and I ordered 64 bronze holes just because we can now that we have materials and we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves an arcane pattern crafter and what we're going to do let's pop over to here and I did get rid of the uh, roost collector because I didn't think about it collecting drops from my other chickens so I was like well I'm gonna get rid of that for now and I'll put I'll facade some other block underneath these or something. I mean we're gonna have visible conduits. There's no way to there's no way to stop that because we have so many different types of conduits going around here and so much going on. But um, I will facade a few of these. All right, what I want to do I have our porcelain chicken set up over here and he's just feeding his porcelain. No reason to really stockpile this because we just aren't gonna be using this too much. But there is one thing I want to make with this and this is actually how I made the bricks and stuff here as well as our brick bronze halls and things um, for the last episode but what I want to do is we're gonna set up a barrel setting say here and our arcane pattern crafter sitting on top of it and I'm just going to uh, right click this knob I want to find that one the two by two uh, setup and then what we're going to do is we're gonna connect up our conduits here and these are all extracting on red and so what we're actually let me switch this to the other side though so it's not like facing directly at us when we were coming into this area oh can conduits not feed into this I was thinking that they could that's fine um, what we're going to do in that case is uh, okay it won't accept items from caches I was thinking that it could So if I do that, there we go. That is going to start making us porcelain bricks. Okay. And then we're gonna have to smelt these. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm gonna keep them stored like this, I think. And I know these kilns aren't the fastest thing, but it's meant to be kind of a stockpile system and not something that we need running super fast initially I'll definitely be wanting for porcelain bricks but I have got some smelted up over at the kiln anyways so it's not a big deal I'm gonna go ahead and grab a chassis mark one oh, I've already got some made up go ahead and grab that and we're gonna set our chassis mark one here and we're going to put a provider module into that and We're just going to bring this up then and run it across that. There we go. So this should be providing our um, porcelain bricks. And let me go grab our key also. I need to start keeping this on me. I've been working. I made another Siglum bag, which is going to be kind of like our tool bag and storage bag. And uh, I'll keep this on me. So I'm just going to dump it into there. 
But then what we're going to do is we're gonna pop over, we're gonna make a quick crafting recipe. And we're gonna say that if you take porcelain bricks, you're going to get bricks. Now I had been making these through the Hellfire Kiln, but I'm fine making them um, over here. And what we're going to do is our electric furnace. We're gonna add a recipe to this. It doesn't cover a ton of recipes because most of the stuff that we need is already crafted. We're gonna go ahead and throw that into there. And then we're gonna come over to our modular storage and our active supplier module. We're going to add in bricks. And we're gonna say keep 127 in stock, bulk 50. And so if we come over, it should be smelting here shortly. It might be requesting the bricks. Yeah, you can see that looks like porcelain bricks coming down the highway. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe that's porcelain bricks. Yeah, there they go. They're going in now and they're coming around to the furnace. I need to make a shortcut for this, I really do. Well, I tell you what, for right now, I'm gonna do that. Um, also, I do wanna show you, I did um, up here, just a heads up, um, after running the, the Phoenix perk, I remember it being pretty good, but I don't know if it's been buffed or if the pack has buffed it or something, but it wasn't as good as I remember. Normally, it gives you healing and strength, but uh, honestly, I wasn't noticing much of a difference um, while running it. Um, so I just got rid of it. I went ahead and made the shifting star so that we could get the um, Armara a Radiant star, star and just completely respec. Um, just because I didn't want Phoenix. It's still pretty much the same, except I went over, took the tough, and then I cut through this area. Instead of cutting around the side, I cut through this area just to take the extra armor boost. I uh, got down to the Stellar Barrier. Then I came up and grabbed the Bulwark, so we get the, well, it ends up being a total of nine added armor and two armor toughness, um, which means that we take like nearly no damage. <laughs> like it takes a huge pack of zombies to hurt me. And then I came over and grabbed our bigger stomach because I love that perk. Now what we're going to do for our last 10 points, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I'm gonna be just as, as I get levels, of course, taking uh, these points, but we're going to take, we're gonna take the first three levels down here. We're gonna get 4% more effectiveness of perks and then we're gonna get the gem socket because uh, I do want a gem socket. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna cut down, take the increased reach and movement speed, increased reach and movement speed. Then we're gonna get increased movement speed here um, and then dodge chance. And then we're going to get spectral wings so that the VCO mantle will give us flight instead of elytra gliding. Um, and that's kind of the, the where my, my other 10 points are going to go. Um, I'm trying to get the most benefit from the points that we have um, as we can. So instead of wasting the four points here for Phoenix Blessing, eh, I wasn't happy with it, so I just respect it. Now, the other thing I wanna do, because I did get rid of our old sand setup and replaced it with this because it kind of fits into the ore processing room a bit better, and realistically, I don't need sand. I don't need EMC, I mean, because I have almost a million EMC uh, that's going to last us for a while. It served its purpose, the Klein Star and everything. For right now, we are going to use it a bit later. But for right now, that's going to be good for us. But what I am going to do is over here, uh, this fluid extractor has done its job. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and pull this fluid extractor up at this point. Um, it's going to cut down on the amount of experience that we're creating, but I'm just about done with caches. And I'm gonna be bumping these up to MV extractors, I think. And this, we're just gonna bring this straight up like so. And then I'm gonna come out and do the same thing over here. So it's gonna be kind of this um, part where the wall kind of sticks out from the outside um, as far as the way it's going to look. And I'm going to leave this hole open just in case. <laughs> just in case. I may have to put a block breaker here because sometimes, like I said, it does back up. Um, but we'll play it by ear and see how it goes. Which I've noticed whenever it stops up seems to generally be around server restart. 
Uh, it'll stop up, but we'll see how things go. So we've got that going on. And then if we set up our vacuumulator, we're going to have it setting, um, yeah, this will be fine. And we're going to put a barrel in, we're going to set in the vacuumulator here instead. Whitelist, sand, move this down to here, and extract on the side this time. And we're going to set one fluid extractor up here. And right over here, we're going to put in a turbine that sits right there. And we're going to just run out some steel cable there, 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 there. The other steam turbine is going to sit right here. I think this will be a little bit better for us. Um, it's going to make a bit more sense, I think. And then this fluid extractor is going to have the conveyor module like before. And I'm going to go grab my screwdriver. We're going to say import mode. There we go. And we're about to have a server restart. That's fine. Um, and then I'm going to take this fluid extractor. We're not going to be getting any XP, but I'm going to, I'm going to hurry up and upgrade that because I want to get this upgraded anyways. Um, and we're going to put in this fluid extractor setting here, item conduit there, insert, extract, always active. And so that's going to start feeding sand in. And uh, I will be back in just a second after the server restart. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take our two basic fluid solidifiers, set it there, there, and then, then we're going to say up down, auto output fluid, auto output fluid. This one's going to get a ball mold, so it's going to start making glass tubes. This one is going to uh, get a block mold, so it continues making glass. We're going to put, uh, we're going to set to the right, to the right, and we're going to put in caches here and here and Enable auto output, enable auto output. Then we'll just go ahead and lock that in, lock that in. And then lastly, I am going to put in a, uh, oh, let's see, we're going to put a portable tank in right here. And then lastly, we're going to put in a tank, I guess sitting right here. Um, Go grab my configurator. All right, and what we're going to do is just put in a couple conduits here. We're going to say that you can insert, you can extract always active, you can extract always active. Just in case we need a little bit of glass now, later on we probably will have a more dedicated liquid uh, glass system, especially if we find that we need it. Uh, but for right now, I just want I want my system to have access to fluids. Now, right now, it's probably going to be prioritizing making this and feeding the glass up to these. That's fine. Um, but whenever these do back up, inevitably, uh, then it's going to be able to feed some of that liquid glass over uh, into those. So that'll be good for us. But yeah, so that way we've got sand, we've got vacuum uh, glass tubes, we have glass, we have liquid glass, all that fun stuff. And then I can just run some pipes over um, from this area, run them over and put uh, provider upgrades into them. And then we will have these in our system. Okay, it has been a little bit and I got a couple quick updates for you guys. I did change this over to a cache just so we can hold more bricks uh, in this. And um, over here, I have been working on this getting this room a little bit sorted. Uh, I did set up advanced fluid extractors, which are pulling our experience from this chicken. I have noticed them to be quite a bit faster and they're chugging away. Um, we are gonna make a large experience gaining area later on, uh, but not just yet. Um, and then over here, I have set up a couple things. Uh, first up, actually, let me pop out here. I have gotten this swapped over um, and you can see right here, we have a tree beacon that's running rubber. This tree beacon is actually not powering our 
charcoal area on this side uh, like it is on the other side um, what it's going to do is it's going to farm kind of the odd trees that we do want to farm but we don't you know we're not powering a system with them so we've got rubber and then I'm going to add later on slime and spectral and you know just an assortment of trees out here that uh, I want farmed now granted there is the phytogenic insulator we're actually going to be getting into one of those um, I think next episode but uh, for right now um, this is fine I have all of these set up except for this one and actually this coke oven set up um, the charcoal and everything is still being ran on the same system but the creosote is going into this portable tank which does have a fluid provider pipe here providing that creosote to us uh, because we're going to be using that in a couple spots. Now, eventually, I am going to set up the other two boilers out here. And whenever I do, I'm going to make a small uh, coke setup somewhere else. Possibly out here, but I really don't think I'm going to have space for it um, out here. So I'll put it, you know, somewhere. Um, also, our rubber, our plastic sheet setup is still over here. And it's running plastic sheets for us. Now, what's actually powering this system, um, and I had t I tried it as oak. It doesn't work. Um... Of course, dark oak provides a lot more wood than oak does. And so what I did was I went ahead and set up an oak farm over here. Um, and so this is feeding over into that. And this is the one that is actually powering our charcoal and everything. I don't think the, yeah, the vacuum emulator is not backed up. All right, I may switch this over for something that's a little bit better. Um, I went with the vacuum emulator because it's cheap, but I think... I may want to switch that because it's not grabbing everything. Now over here, uh, this has been running. We have, we're closing in on 10,000 glass tubes, closing in on, uh, we've got 9,000 glass. Um, pretty neck and neck on these. Um, our logistics pipes, they run behind these and provide this stuff to our system from the caches and barrels. Um, I did add one more machine here. It's feeding um, a basic electrolyzer that's got a steam turbine here that is creating our silicon dioxide dust um, and this does have a provider attached to it so that we can provide it to the system um, there is some uses for silicon dioxide that silicon you know I don't want to just feed it all into making silicon and not have silicon dioxide supplied to the system so um, we're building it up there um, over here steam turbines this one feeds a chemical reactor that's being fed raw rubber pulp um, and it's getting sulfur which I've got to plug this up, I'm going to here in just a second. And then we have a centrifuge here that's going to get plugged up that's going to be creating our raw rubber pulp and our plant balls for us. Um, and then that's feeding in the, the glue that we make, and then this is feeding in the rubber that we make. Um, and this is being, this has an active supplier that's telling it to feed rubber pulp and sulfur, but I did forget to plug these up, which I'm about to do. I'm going to take about a second. Um, let me pop over and get my I'd ordered some modules and chassis pipes all right so I'm gonna pull this up I'd actually forgotten about this but it's a cool little example we can we can show so uh, we throw our provider modules into there and since this up here is requesting that raw rubber pulp um, if we give it just a moment you could see that some raw rubber pulp just got pumped out and is sending up here to make more rubber for us and this I need to feed it as well because I can fit it on the back side, but I really don't want pipes sticking through the walls on our hallway. Um, and we're going to be hiding a lot of these away. Some of them we won't be able to, of course. But I think, because I'm running out of space, I think I'm going to put it right there. Um, I do believe. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in an active supplier module. And this active supplier module, we'll just pop it into there. Um, it's going to be keeping, we're going to say partial, because I have noticed that's been working for me. And we're going to say sticky resin. I'm not going to plug that up just yet because we're about to set something up real quick. Now, right over here, what we're going to do, we're going to set up another steam turbine. We're trying to make the most of our rooms, because they're not massive rooms, but I'm trying to make them be at least look halfway decent you know um, but we're going to set up a steam turbine right here and we are going to set in a mixer right here and I just realized I need to move these mechanical pipes slightly so what I'm going to do I'm going to pipe this over like so okay so what we're going to do we're going to do a logistics fluid supplier here we're going to inside of here um, 
is it thermal foundation creosote that we make? Is it not like a Greg Tech? It is, it is thermal foundation uh, creosote. Okay, so what we're going to do is just open this up. You can drag and drop, but we're just going to put in bucket of that. Keep 10,000 in here. Partial, yes. Minimum mode, one bucket. And if we look, that should be it. It's going to come around, go into here. There we go. 10,000 millibuckets of creosote because it pulled it from this tank, which quickly refilled um, back up. And then we're going to put in a logistics chassis pipe that sits there. And at this point, I could... It's going to be wild. <laughs> it's going to be just a big pile of pipes right here. Um, but I'd need, I'd basically need a side for power, a side to extract, a side to insert items, a side to insert fluids. That's four sides. And I'm trying to compact it into this wall, so uh, it doesn't, it's a little bit crazy. But you can see actually this just sent in some uh, sticky resin. Now, what are we, let me actually, uh, oops. Let me actually increase the number that we're stocking to say 32. Keep 32 inside of our centrifuge. And if we give it a minute, it's gonna send over uh, 32 sticky resin for us. There it goes, right into there. Awesome. And then now that it's used one, it's gonna send another one over here shortly um, and just constantly be sending sticky resin over. Now, something like this, it might be fine. We're gonna go ahead and just set it to bolt 50. Um, so if it goes below 50%, restock it, and that way it's just not it's not sending constant. Even though I like the sending constant, it's a little bit more stress on the server, uh, so we'll try to keep that down. Um, now right here, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a another supplier module. And I know this episode's running on. We're about to wrap up. Just so many things I wanted to get done. Now that we can, now that we're kind of at the dawn of automation, there's just so many things I want to automate. Um, we're going to put in. Um, in this case, we're going to be using redstone. Now, you can use talc or soapstone, um, but we're going to use redstone because actually next episode, we are going to be automating redstone, um, or that's the goal, one of our goals for next episode. We're going to do a little bit more automation type work next episode. One of the things I'd really like to do is get redstone automated. Um, I don't think there's anything standing in our way. It's actually pretty easy to automate, but you can see that this is going to start producing lubricant, and it makes 750 lubricant each craft. Um, we're going to go with redstone, talc, and soapstone. I wouldn't suggest going with because the magnesium you're going to want uh, for whenever we, you know, once we get into titanium, we're going to want lots of magnesium. Um, not to mention I have 11,563 redstone to my name. So I think I'm going to be okay on redstone until we get it automated. Um, so this is producing lubricant for us. Now what we're going to do is we are going to pop back. We're going to pop back here. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in... And we're going to bring this up to right there. And let's go ahead, let's extract. So it's going to start pulling that lubricant out from here. And we're going to put in a signalum tank sitting right there. And this is a large signalum tank. This is the one that can store a mil, almost a million and a half millibuckets of, uh, of stuff. We're going to store up a whole lot of lubricant. lubricant. Um, you actually don't use a whole lot of it, but it's something that I do want to go ahead and stockpile a fair amount of. Um, but it's really easy to make. So, and we're going to use it progressively more and more as we go on. Um, so just having this spot for it, it does craft super fast. So we're not going to go probably above a basic mixer unless we just find that we really need to. Um, I think this will be okay for us. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and switch out this real quick and put in instead a fluid provider pipe there and that is good that means that our system now has access to the lubricant from this tank um, originally I had this set up over in the ore system but I think I'm just gonna move it um, my reasoning was was that uh, it was related to this tree farm I'd rather keep that tree that uh, ore room kind of pure just for ores and we're actually going to be getting cables automated. That's why I've been setting up to get the rubber and everything. Because really then it's just a, pro a process of putting a fluid provider pipe. Or I mean a supplier pipe onto 
an assembly machine and then there you go you've got uh, which I'm going to be doing that off camera but that's all it is that's all there is to it just put a fluid provider say you're providing rubber keep 10,000 or 5,000 or whatever stocked and there we go we have a copper making machine um, and so that's what I'm trying to push towards because I'm tired of doing this we're going to be automatically making cables and starting to keep them stocked so that's what most of my automation right now has been aimed at it's just getting it so I don't have to craft any of this stuff anymore. I can just click and just, there you go, make my machine for me. Yeah, let's actually just set it up up here, in fact. Because I was wanting to run some cables up through here anyways. So this is still, yeah, this is still basic pipe. Let me run that through. Because this is all going to tie into phenolic circuit boards and stuff too. So we'll put it up in this frame, I suppose. Okay, I'm going to put a fluid supplier right there. And this fluid supplier... We're going to say keep um, that lubricant, keep that, and keep uh, keep 5,000 millibuckets. It's really not a big deal. This thing uses one millibucket per operation. So it's super, it's super efficient on that lubricant. But here in a minute, we need to add uh, speed upgrades and stuff. But there we go. There's the lubricant. It just came around. I haven't been too worried about speed upgrades because honestly, I'm only waiting on stuff whenever I first set it up and then it's just, you know, it's keeping everything stocked for us. So it really doesn't matter too much. We have 60 buckets already of uh, lubricant and yeah, now we're waiting on creosote. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, 60 buckets, that's 60,000 operations. I think we'll be okay for a little while anyways. Uh, and so what we're going to do then, we're going to, uh, let's put an unrouted here. And we're going to put a chassis on the side of this. Now this chassis is going to be set up with a module. And once again, we're going to be using, not a crafting module, an active supplier module. Put that into there. And we're going to say uh, bulk 50 is fine, but I want you to keep oak wood. And so it should order... Um, oak wood from over there and have it sent over because all my crafting recipes that I have set up use oak wood planks you know making chests and stuff and now I don't have to make planks anymore now in addition we're going to get wood pulp good stuff so what we're going to do we're going to set up um, I guess a couple caches um, I'll tell you what we're gonna do we're going to set this up we're gonna say that you can extract but it's gonna be on like the magenta line and we're just going to run our conduits back. And then we're going to set up our caches. One setting right there. I don't want you to connect. And then one setting right here. And we're going to say that, of course, one of these is going to take the wood pulp. One of these is going to take the oak wood. You can insert on magenta. You can insert on magenta lock those in. They should be fast enough without speed upgrades, so that's not going to be a problem for us. Um, and then we're going to run down, uh, let me make, uh, well these are provider modules. We're going to put in our chassis pipes here, and we're going to put in provider modules here, here, and then just connect that up. So now my system will have oak wood planks and wood pulp aplenty. And that way I can set up automation for phenolic circuit boards. So yay. Good stuff. I'm going to be setting up a better place to use the XP shower a little bit later. <laughs> but right now I just have to put a lever here and do it. But uh, but yeah, so that side that side's pretty well done. Um, I may add something small over here. But, uh, but yeah, I think that'll be good. And now we're producing... We're After this episode, we're actually producing a ton of new things um, for us to have access to and we cleaned up all of our old setups kind of in one fell swoop which is nice so anyways i know it's wrapping up point for this episode so we're going to end this one out here next episode we are going to get over to the um to some of our big liquid automation stuff here soon but i do want to spend one more episode kind of doing sort of miscellaneous um, automation i do want to get redstone automated it'll be redstone and gold and glowstone automated all at once just boom um, so i do want to get that done 
probably some other liquid related things and item related things. So I just want to spend a couple episodes just and and sometime between episodes just overhauling and adding a lot of automation because I don't want to just keep pushing progression because then we're going to be it's going to make our lives a lot harder than if we just automate as we go and just automate lots of things um, and get our fluids kind of in a point where they're being handled and our system can intelligently make a lot of things for us. So that way we don't have to. It saves us a whole lot of time. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.